Welcome to Contact. Today we're going to be wrapping up our series, Receiving by Faith, and this is our fourth message. And um, we have really We've enjoyed this. We've covered the this. waterfront. We've enjoyed this. It's, it's uh, been kind of uh, wild, um, <laughs> but, but we're you know we'll get down to even more specifics this time. Right. We've got a final uh, focus: um, how that we actually are saved by grace through faith. So obviously, um, since we're talking about receiving by faith, that's the ultimate, the most important thing is for you to understand the gospel, understand the plan of redemption, understand what Jesus did for you on Calvary, so that it's actually a living, vital revelation in your life, and then you're able to accept and receive Him as your Savior by faith. Right. So we're going to discuss some of that, but also the benefits of being uh, connected with God. So stick with us. We'll be right back. Billy Burke is coming to FLM. Come hungry, come expecting. You don't want to miss this powerful event. Sunday, April 18th at 7.30 p.m. and Monday, April 19th at 10.30 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. Contact with Randy and Cherie has been reaching our local community, our nation, and world abroad with the gospel. Since the beginning, it has been the heart of pastors Randy and Cherie to see souls saved and lives changed through this broadcast. Because of your faithful support, Contact continues to grow and expand. We are reaching more people now than ever before. You can watch our broadcast on Fox Richmond, MyTV Richmond, MyTVZ Norfolk, ABC7 Washington, and Fox 45 Baltimore. For air dates and showtimes, visit our website at contact.tv. Here, you can also view and stream our shows and partner with us from anywhere in the world. Would you like to become a partner with Contact? For your gift of any amount, you can become a partner today. Get monthly articles by pastor, receive free gifts, and get the latest info on what's around the corner. Together, we are fulfilling the Great Commission. Thank you for your faithful support and commitment to spreading the gospel here on Contact with Randy and Cherie. Welcome back. Really glad that you're with us. We're wrapping up this series today. And uh, just to re uh, re uh, reiterate uh, some of the illustrations that we've used, uh, the grace of God can be seen as a giant container, uh, a bag, if you will, full of all of the blessings of God. And then we talked about faith as being a means of transport. So, uh, this passage, let, let me read this to you, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So the, the whole uh, grace package is presented to us, and then by faith you can just reach in and receive, uh, in, in this case, the verse is talking about your salvation and the, the gift of God, divine um, nature, the, right. like the way Peter put it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, what God wants us to do, living by faith, becomes a process of learning how to use our faith as we grow in the Lord, mm -hmm. uh, use our faith to receive all the things that Jesus died to give us. Now, as those things come into our lives, the, the believer becomes fortified. For instance, uh, two of the, the major things is uh, divine healing right. and divine prosperity. Mm -hmm. See, so divine healing is the way that you're able to use your faith to receive what Jesus died to give us at Calvary, which he took stripes on his back for our healing. So it stands as a part of the contract. That's right. You were actually born into that when you got saved. It is all automatically yours. But by faith, you accept it and receive it into your life, and you live in divine health. Now, that obviously, that becomes very um, vital and important when you're in a time like what we've been in with the uh, coronavirus uh, and any other kind of a sickness 
that is on the earth, in the earth, uh, but you've been uh, delivered from that by uh, what Jesus did for you at Calvary. So you learn how to use your faith to accept what Jesus did. Okay, the other big one is uh, the Bible tells us, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, that Jesus became poor that we might be made rich. Mm -hmm. And so rich is a uh, scary word to some people. Okay, but he's talking about a full and abundant supply. So uh, what the word shows us uh, that Jesus taught and what you could see in the Old Testament is God is the source of all things. And so by faith, we learn how to accept our deliverance from poverty, which is separation from God. Okay, so uh, we uh, are separate. Mm -hmm. We're redeemed so our the separation from God is removed and then we're able to receive full abundance right I was just while you were talking about that I was going back over to because we started out um, the whole series talking about um, this man named Abraham right who at the at when God approached him to make this covenant um, he introduced himself and said, I, I want to bless you. Right. I want to make a covenant with you. And through you, all nations of the world will be blessed. Right. So, you know, we're talking about um, being Which is the case today. saved that, that, by happened. grace through faith. Right. And that it's not of ourselves. It's not anything we have to work for, pay for, suffer for. It's already, been, all of that was done by Jesus. Right. So by faith, we just receive By faith. It. So in, you know, Galatians, it says that uh, Christ in verse 13, Jesus has redeemed us from the curse, any curse of the law, anything that was on the curse of the law. He was made a curse for us for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. So all of this is all things what receiving by faith we're showing you. But then over in verse 29, it says, if you be Christ, if you've asked Jesus to be your savior, then it says you are Abraham's seed yeah. and heirs according to according to the promise. Right. So an heir receives something by transfer mm -hmm. that they had nothing to do with. It just became theirs. Because they were born. Right. So you're born into this. We're born into this. So, so we were born into the blessing of Abraham. Right. And when, so when one, we got saved. one of the blessings, like I said, in, in uh, first Peter, verse mm. two, 224, mm. That um, who his own self bear, bear our, sins our sins in his, his own, own body, body on the tree, that, that we being dead, dead to sin, sin should, should live, live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. healed. Yeah. So that is another, you know, a word, a promise from God that mm -hmm. and it gets in you meditate, it gets in your heart, it comes out of your mouth. And so, you know, when symptoms or a doctor's report or anything diseases. like diseases. So we're talking about you read in Ephesians 2 verse 8, by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So our faith is a gift. The grace is a gift. And through these things, through our faith in what he's said, we receive all these things that right. are written and in the word. And reign in life. And reign in life. Become partakers of the divine nature. All of these things belong to us. So um, grace is a power word, too. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? It is. Um, it's the ho Holy Spirit's operation in us. Mm -hmm. And it's the force of faith. Right. Where things are, where we are accomplished. Right. In our life. So... 
So one of the things that a, a believer should do is we're, we're told that we, the just shall live by faith. Exactly. That's also in that scripture. Okay. So uh, believers could and should be using our faith to possess the promised land of our inheritance, which is all of the promises of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we should go in and possess the things that belong to us by faith. Right. Yeah. So uh, actually living that way, uh, you know, the nation of Israel, what happened with them is, is that they did run into obstacles, so to speak. And so uh, even though it doesn't show that it was them praying and using their faith against the obstacles. As long as they acted on what God told them to do, the power was always there to remove the obstacle. Now, it turns out that there were uh, the nations, the, the pagan nations that were occupying the land when uh, Israel went in to possess. Uh, it's like what God told Joshua, every place on which your foot shall tread I have mm -hmm. given unto you. So the operation of faith for Joshua and the nation of Israel became a step by step. I'm going in to take it. So uh, just a couple of like application of this uh, in your life. Uh, I went being raised, you know, our uh, it, it's like our family and uh, me personally were subject to. Uh, sickness and diseases and there were certain things that I, I just you know I, I accepted it as a part of life it's going to happen to me mm -hmm. you know er every year about this time okay and so uh, I also contracted uh, when I was in the world I contracted a terminal disease right. which was literally eating up part of my body and um, the day that I got saved I was completely healed uh, from that disease and it left my body. Okay. But uh, the point is, is that uh, there could be obstacles in your life that you sh you need to learn how to use your faith to come against that thing, uh, that obstacle. Now in, in my life too, poverty was a barrier. Okay. So, cause we were raised uh, in poverty. My father died when I was five years old and left the family destitute and, and so forth. And, and so I grew up in the, in the, you know, the, the low end of town, so to speak. And, uh, you know, and so we had built into us mm -hmm. a, a, an identity and a mentality of restraint. Right. That there was only certain things that we could expect to be able to do because of who we were. Okay. Well, all of those things were like the, the mountain for me that Jesus was talking about when he said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So I learned how to take those promises and turn it into a confession mm -hmm. and come against the mountain of the sickness and the sickness and disease and the poverty in our lives and literally drove it away. Right. Well, um, we've talked about a lot of things that people need in their life, but you know, I want to just show you how you can take the word of God to deal with every possible situation. One of the big things that uh, we face, not just in our country, but around the world is injustice, social mm -hmm. injustice. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I've got a scripture here in Acts chapter 10, which is a very telling scripture, but it just shows you how the word of God is applicable in every generation, mm -hmm. in every situation, That's true. to every group of people. And so it has to do with... Uh, Peter, uh, who was, think about it. Now, this was the Pauline revelation, but Peter was someone who was one of Jesus' closest disciples. It was always Peter, James, and John. Right. Peter, James, and John. But yet, uh, all the time, God 
pre Jesus preached about how he was no respecter of persons. Yeah, God, how, God is no respecter. God is no respecter of persons. <clears throat> and so, and how, you know, he talked about love. Yeah. He talked about being fair to everyone, loving every, love your, um, do unto others right. as you and would Jesus have. Jesus talked about the fact that he was sent to other people's uh, also. Right. And, and um, even, you know, in the Old Testament, he was prophesied, mm. you know, at, to to be uh, someone who was uh, the savior of all nations, of uh, all people. That's true. And so so here's Peter and these people who were her, her scribes and Pharisees and scholars of the word. And and even Jesus died. And Peter is actually a preacher. Right. Under the new covenant, he's the one who stood up on the day of Pentecost by the Holy Ghost and preached the gospel and all those people got saved. Yeah. But yet here we are a few years, later. years down the road. Right. And so and uh, the gospel has never gone outside of Jerusalem, not, never gone outside of that circle of people. And so he was in a t town visiting Simon the Tanner, and there was a, a centurion named Cornelius who was of an Italian descent, so no connection to Israel whatsoever, but yet he was a prayerful man. He supported the Jews, helped build synagogues, and he was praying. And so I'm going to pick it up in Acts chapter 10. And so the, here's where the vision of this four-cornered sheet came down. In the sheet, Peter's up there. He's probably hungry. He's seeing uh, crabs and all kinds of things that Jews wrap, you know, pigs. <laughs> he had they, never even touched those things. Never touched them, never ate them. And it yeah. came down three times. And, P and God said to Peter in the vision, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And he said, no, no, I've never eaten anything common or unclean. So here in it says, while Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said to him, behold, three men seek you. Arise, go down, go with them, down nothing for I have sent them. So then, you know, an angel appeared to Cornelius, told him to go to this place where Peter was and there they were. And so Peter stood up and said, you know, now here's the, the, the social justice thing. This is where he was mentally. This is tradition. Yeah. This is the scribes and Pharisees. Yeah. This is it, folks. Yeah. And he said, you know that it is unlawful for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come to one of another nation. And the law he was talking about was the law of Moses. Yeah, the, and the here Levitical he is. He's, he's, and he's saved. He's under a different he's covenant. He's saved. He's filled with the Holy Ghost. But yeah. he does not have this revelation. It had to be revealed. Yeah, he didn't believe him. it yet. God had to put Peter in a trance mm -hmm. to get his attention. Right. To show him, I, this is this is what I've said all along. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he said, but God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So he goes on and then um, he preaches. He said, Cornelius, your prayer is heard. Your alms are in remembrance in the sight of God. And Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth. I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, yeah. who is Lord of all. Right. Now, isn't that amazing? So uh, a person, just to apply that, mm -hmm. a person could be born in like the United States of America or actually any other nation of the earth and be oppressed uh, and pushed down just simply because of who they are physically. Right. And um, the Bible calls it partiality. Yeah. Respect of persons is the same as being partial, taking sides, right. one side against another. Right. So that's been a plague, right. you know, for mankind, even, even back there. And yeah. if God doesn't intervene. So a believer intervene, can use his faith right. to press past this mountain of opposition, right. oppression in their lives. Right. And, and there's, I mean, that actually is a very big subject 
in the Bible. David talked about it. Everybody in, in, in the Word has talked about it. Mm -hmm. So you can press through and pass the obstacle because God has accepted you on the basis of what Jesus did for you at Calvary, and God is no respecter of persons. Right. So God made a promise to Abraham yeah. when he said, that's, and it's even no, showed them, yeah. in you all, all nations, nations of the world, of the world shall, be, shall blessed. be blessed. That's part of the blessing, blessing of, of Abraham. Abraham. There it Are you going right to read there. it? Let's yeah. read it. Okay, so this is uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll read uh, more than that to you. So let's start at 1. Uh, verse 1, it says, And the Lord said unto Abram, Get you out of your country, uh, from your kindred, from your father's house, unto a land that I will show you. That, that was like a restriction uh, in Abraham's believing because he was raised mm -hmm. a particular way. Uh, verse 2, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. Make your name great. You don't have to make your name great. I'll make it great. Go, and go ahead. I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you or oppose or, or you know, remove an obstacle of them out of your life. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Curse them that curse you, and in you shall all, all families, families of the earth be blessed. Right. So the blessing of Abraham actually makes a believer a blessing wherever they go. And it's available to right. every person by faith. Yeah. There is no gender. There is no race. There is no economic barrier. There is no thing yeah. that can keep you from receiving uh, by faith. That's all part of the Pauline revelation. Yes. You, uh, and it's given to every, it, whosoever will believe. Right. Whosoever. So he's saying, here it is prophesied in the book of Genesis, that the, the opportunity to be, a me, to be made righteous by the blood of Jesus through faith is to every single person. So um, in Adam, the whole human race uh, comes under that sin nature, but in Christ, we all become a part of the family of God. Yeah. So that is absolutely amazing. And here's the, here's the action part. Right. The next verse says, so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. Yeah. So it's, he got up so it, and said, you know, Sarah, everybody pack. I don't know where yeah. we're going, but we're leaving. Right. We're obeying God. He made a promise. And he left his father's house. He left everything. The way he was raised. Now, mm -hmm. now, uh, you know, we just read about Peter. And so this is not casting a stone at Peter. But Peter didn't do that with his faith. He didn't leave his father's house. He was still acting out Jewish tradition, mm -hmm. which caused him to... Uh, actually discriminate against everybody else on the planet but them. Exactly. Okay. And so then... He, he didn't get the full message yeah, so until God, the Holy Ghost got God him. God had to get Peter to the place where he would preach to other people, and that's really where the gospel broke out to the nations of the world. That's right. In yeah. fact, he had to go and explain himself to the, uh, the council. That's, that's in Acts 11. So to speak, because... Yeah. While he was preaching, yeah. the Holy Ghost fell on all of these Gentiles, right. and they all started speaking in tongues, and then they all got water baptized, right. and all because God wanted to make sure that what he had promised to Abram and what he has promised to everyone who will believe by faith, that you it, this is available to everyone. All of God's promises are yes and amen. There's nothing that can stop the blessing of God from coming into your life for any reason. If you have faith, yeah. then you can have what God has promised you. Hallelujah. Amen. So we'll be right back to close out this series. Hope it's been a blessing to you. We'll see you in just a minute. Raise your level of understanding and root yourself deeper in the Word of God at Faith Landmarks Bible Institute. 
With two years of extensive learning, FLBI is diligent about seeing your walk with God ascend to new heights. For a limited time, you can take full FLBI courses at no charge. Register online at flbi.org and choose from multiple ways to learn. Make the spiritual investment to grow in your knowledge of the kingdom here at Faith Landmarks Bible Institute. It's great that you've joined us today. It's possible that while we were describing the salvation experience that you uh, decided on the inside of you that you would like to do that now uh, as well. So I can lead you in a simple uh, prayer. It's also a confession of faith. And um, you can be born into the family of God right now. You can be saved. You can have your sins washed away. You can become a new creature. All of the terminology means the same thing. You can be born again. You can be saved right now. Now, uh, it's very simple. Uh, just follow me in this. Say this with me. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you are raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord. I call you my Lord. Lord Jesus, come into my life, wash away all of my sin, cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I accept you today as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So we're really glad that you've been with us today on Contact and uh, join us again. Download your copy of What Jesus Did for You at Calvary by scanning the QR code on the screen or by visiting contact.tv. This download is available in multiple languages. So glad that you've been with us on contact. We're wrapping things up. And uh, so we want to pray with you. If you s simply say this with me, I believe in my heart that Jesus is raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. You shall be saved. The Bible says that's the promise. So you just got saved if that's the first time you ever did that. Now, at the bottom of the screen, we have a, what we call a QR code and a banner. And so you can uh, download a free book we'd like to give you. It's a discipleship book that tells you uh, in capsulization everything that Jesus did for you at Calvary. And we'd like to get that to you for your benefit. So you can just take a picture at the bottom and it offloads into your device. And we simply want to say to you that we have really enjoyed being with you. This has been a powerful series. Boy, we really covered the waterfront. And... Um, you can have this uh, in your life continuously by simply downloading it all. You can get the whole thing as a podcast uh, and go back and, and review it and get it in your life. So we want to say to you that we love you and appreciate you, and we'll see you again on Contact. <music>